welcome to Ministry in Motion, where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. I'm Derek Morris. And I'm Anthony Kent. And whether you're a pastor or a lay leader in your local church, a volunteer, we're delighted to provide Ministry in Motion for you. And I'm excited, Anthony, about the topic today, uh, coping with black swans. What? I'm from Australia, Derek, and I know what a black swan is. Tell me about the context well, you're we'll using have to it in. Stay tuned for Ministry of Motion, but we're talking about how to handle an unexpected personal or professional crisis. Uh, that's something that happens to all of us, isn't it? At some stage or another, we, we seem to, to run into that. And our guest today is... Our guest today is one of my favorite guests on Ministry of Motion, Dr. Delbert Baker, who, who brings some insights that will truly help pastors, lay leaders, uh, as we're involved in the sacred work of ministry. And Pastor Baker, certainly skilled presenter, articulate communicator. I'm really looking forward to the program. I am too. And we're glad that you're here as we talk about how to handle an unexpected personal or professional crisis, coping with black swans. I know that you'll be challenged and blessed. We'll be right back with more Ministry in Motion right after the break. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, coping with black swans, how to handle an unexpected personal or professional crisis. Our guest, Dr. Delbert Baker. Delbert, it's great to have you again on Ministry of Motion. Good to be here. Good to be here. Now, this title is a fascinating one. I know it comes from an author who spoke about the black swan syndrome. Right. Tell That's me right. about that. Uh, it's an, Talib. Uh, he's a well researcher, great writer, good person who popularized the title because the Europeans in the 17th century thought that all swans were white. And until they realized that there were some swans that were black. And thus he took this and said a black swan event is something that happens to a person that is low probability, but if it happens, high impact. Meaning it's the chances of it happening may not be very great, but if it happens to you, it can knock you off your feet. Now, I understand he first applied that to, to the financial arena. He did. He had a book called uh, Fooled by Randomness. That's right. That's but then right. he came out with the sequel, Black That's Swan, right. where he kind of applied it to life in general. Exactly. And, and we're here talking about ministry. And I understand that you've even got some responsibilities as a leader in, in the Seventh-day Adventist Church dealing with these uh, Black Swan events. Tell me, tell me about yeah. that. Well, I chair the Crisis Management Committee here in the General Conference uh, that deals with the hot spots around the globe. I mean, literally around the world. And so when you have a coup, when you have something that happens or a hurricane or a tornado or a fire or some destructive act, uh, that's generally referred to as a black swan because people think it won't happen to me. It's not going to happen to my conference or my church or my home or whatever. But if it does happen, it can have devastating impact. Uh, Derek, once something happened to me, a great uh, black swan event that happened in my life in 19, uh, 1997. I was with a group of presidents traveling in Southeast Asia. So we're going to uh, Cambodia. And so we checked out the U.S. Embassy and they told us no problem, you know, as we can go there. And our guide was saying to us, it's okay. We got there on a Friday morning. And so Friday evening, we went to the hotel in downtown Phnom Penh, 1997. Uh, we were there, we came out for Vespers in the evening, and literally at that time, the city exploded. Mm. It was a coup taking place right then and there in Nam Pen, Cambodia. <laughs> that was a black swan event. Absolutely. We never would have expected Low probability, high impact. High impact, absolutely. So there we were locked in the hotel. I mean, we were literally locked in there for three days. Mm. And finally, the, we had the U.S. Embassy to send an armored truck to come in there and take us out take us to the airport and took us on a cargo plane to London. And I never forgot that. We said, no, it can never happen to us, but it did. Mm. And the whole principle is that black swan events can happen to people, but they've got to be ready for them when they happen. As we think about uh, the possibility of, of, of this unexpected event with high impact, um, we're going to talk about some strategies, but, sure. but biblical perspective, are there some stories in the scripture yeah. that jump out at you and say, well, that was a black swan event, uh, just, just to let us know that it's happened before it could happen again? 
I, I think of the great story of Elijah in uh, 1 King 19, after this great spiritual victory, when he is victorious over all the prophets of Baal, and he's on a spiritual high, he's the number one man in the nation. And immediately after that, Derek, he gets a message from Jezebel. She says, I want to kill you. You're going to be dead before day's up. And he flips out. This is a black swan event. I mean, here he is, a man who's on a spiritual high, and it wipes him off his feet. 19th chapter, 1 King talks about it. And in verse, verse 4, it says, he says, okay, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. I mean, it's a powerful concept, and that's really what happens to us. We can lose our bearing, lose our perspective when these events happen. So we've got to be ready for them. Um, if he had expected that, could he have handled it differently? I think so. Okay. I, I, I think so. And, and, I mean, the Bible brings out that Elijah... Uh, the same God who helped him to be victorious over the prophets of Baal could have helped him surely handle Jezebel. And if she was that powerful and if she was that able to take his life out, why didn't she do it? Why was she just talking? Mm. Actually, I think she was wanting to bluff him and scare him mm. uh, because she knew that this was a very powerful man. Well, the principle is here we see in the Bible text is, is well, the strategy simply is that what we do is whenever the event comes to us, Derek, we immediately want to freeze and pause. Don't react. Don't flip out immediately. And then the principle, there are three basic steps. Okay. You want to hear it now or you want to do it later? Let's get started. Okay. Okay. It, it sounds a lot like a, a, another program we've done on situational awareness. So we, we've, we're, we're pausing. Yes. The, this unexpected personal or professional crisis has come. It, it's high impact. Yes, it is. You're saying... It's kind of like I remember it count to 10. Well, yeah, yeah, it is like that in a way. Um, you know, you, you've had these great survivors, like the guy who survived for these many days on the water on a raft. And, and the, what he said all the way through was, you know, I am a survivor. I am a survivor. I remember that. Uh, it, it's saying he's repeating to himself. So the three steps are, first of all, when the black swan happens, you do the next right thing. You do the next? You do the next right thing. Thing. Okay. Meaning, now that there's an implication with that, meaning you have to know a next right thing to do. So it would have helped to think about possible scenarios. If I get a blow on the side of the head, you know, I, I don't want to react immediately. I want to think about this thing, you know, just right. rather than just losing my perspective. So do the next right thing. Number two, and that is, uh, well, Taleb says, you know, go to your mantra, you, you know, re re repeat a mantra. We say, uh, go to your core truth. Okay. Okay. Think about the next right thing to do, meaning that you don't want to react negatively. Then what is the core truth? In other words, in a Christian context, what would God want me to do? Not, not what do I feel like doing or not what other people are doing. Uh, the next right thing, what is the core truth? Lord, I know you're with me. You are by my side. I know that you're not going to leave me. I know I'm wiped out with this thing. I am so upset or I'm so devastated. I can't imagine me having cancer. It's a terrible thing. But just think, Lord, you're with me. I know you're going to carry me through it. You've done it before, you'll do it again. So next right thing, mantra. And finally, the third one is surrender, but don't give up. Mm. That's a powerful principle. What it basically says is that you come to this juncture in your life and you say, you know, it's all in God's hands. So I, I recognize that I can lose my life or I can lose my job or my perspective, but I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do my very best. So if it does, God's in charge. It's going to be okay. Let's those unpack steps. that a little more after the break, those, those three steps, and maybe we can find some uh, examples of characters in the Bible or history or even today that have done it well. Sure. Uh, you may have faced a black swan event in your life, even in the last 12 months. Uh, how do we know what to do? There may be one right around the corner, and we certainly don't look forward to it, but unexpected, high-impact event, personally or professionally, we're going to learn what to do next. We'll be right back with more Ministry in Motion after the break. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, coping with black swans. Those unexpected 
crises that, that can throw you for a loop, that can send you into a panic mode, uh, how do I handle those personal or profesh, professional crises in my life? And our guest, Dr. Delbert Baker, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to happen. They're going to happen. A crisis either personally or professionally. Well, you know, Derek, you said right before the break that it could be around the corner. In fact, research brings out that it probably is around the corner. Mm. You know, now, uh, a young person, you know, maybe they won't face the aging crises that an older person would face, but uh, they could have a social situation come up. They could have a family situation. And in our environment with the very fragile economy we're in, I mean, shucks, we find people losing their jobs all the time. I mean, that's a, that's a black swan. I mean, you know, or if a person's in the, I was talking to a lady the other day, she was saying that her daughter was a, a top uh, track star, and this is just a couple days ago, winning awards, top of her game, whatever. All of a sudden, would you believe she found that she had cancer at the, tip, at the tip of her large toe, hmm. and they had to amputate part of the toe, and it pretty much pulled her out of the, at least the speed category of racing, even though she stood, could compete still. And I thought to myself, I said, isn't that ironic, you know, something that was so dear to her and she lost that. That was a black swan. Mm, mm. And so she'd learn how to cope with that. And, and that's one of the challenges that Christians face. We will have problems. How do we deal with it is the question. And let's go back. You quickly reviewed these three steps. Let's, right. let's take them one at a time. Sure. When I face a personal or professional crisis, unexpected but high impact, um, What's a, what's a typical non-thinking response? Uh, to, lose, to lose perspective, cry, to give up, you know, why me, you know, why is it happening to me? Um, I can't believe it's happening to me. Or, you know, even some Christians say, you know, why did God let me have, let that happen to me? And they, and they get angry, they get upset, and they just figure, you know, I've been faithful, especially persons in the health reform where they're really into healthful living. Right. When something happens to them, then they really feel like, you know, I've done right, then how is this happening to me? Then they often lose faith and give up on whatever profession they It have. sounds like you're describing irrational behavior because the crisis is intense, right? Yeah, it's irrational, but it's probably so human. I mean, it's, I mean, it's just <laughs> well, so I real know, like all we, of us. We act know. irrationally. Uh, That's right. If we don't stop and review the first step again. Right. What's the first step? Uh, do the next right thing. Uh, let, how do I know what the next right thing is? Uh, what intuitively seems the next right thing? In other words, if you've been following a path of faith or following a path of, you know, God has blessed you, whatever station you're in life, then, then when something bad happens, the right thing is not to think that it's all over. You know, other people have gone through this right here and they've been able to get through it. I mean, it's possible that a person can go through crisis. I think of uh, Joni Tata Erickson, yeah. you know, this beautiful young lady when she was in some years ago, I had a life before and she jumped off the diving board and the- Just a teenager, I think. Just a teenager, Late right? Teenager. And she uh, broke her neck and was paralyzed from neck down. And she said she was plunged into this deep, dark, dismal period in life for a number of years, a couple, few years. To finally one day she came to a turning point and said, you know, is this right? Is this a good thing to do? God doesn't want me to do this. And then she realized that God could use her in spite of this terrible, terrible tragedy that in fact happened. So the next right thing was, let me have faith. Let me, let me trust God. Let me believe that there's life after the situation. That's Christian, Derek. Okay. I, I know that the, uh, the fellow who was the mayor in California some time ago, this is many years ago, and they found out that he was homosexual, okay? And uh, once he was exposed at that some years ago, it was really a bad thing, and he pretty much lost his perspective and his career as a politician. I heard him say um, about a year or two ago in reflecting back on that experience that happened some 10, 15 years before, he said, I realized that there's life after that crisis. Mm. Even, so even a non-Christian says there's life after this, there is hope beyond this, so I cannot give up. That's the next right thing. You don't give up. So let's, let me give you a case study. Okay. Dear friend of mine, um, faithful in his ministry, finds out that his wife has a tumor. Uh, they're active in ministry together, they live a healthy lifestyle, and all of a sudden, boom, th this would be a black swan event, right? Black swan, absolutely. Uh, so... Well, first of all, you have to unpack it, and you know, the unpacking it is, you know, what's going on here? You know, what, what is the problem? I mean, diagnose it, go to a doctor, you know, check it out before you even react there. Is that and, the next right thing then? In that well, part, situation, part, would you part say? Of the, part of the next right thing is unpacking it to see, okay. you know, what's going on here with me? I mean, am I really, do I really have cancer? Because is, I might hear that word and think, I'm gonna yeah. be dead in two weeks. 
Yeah, I when mean, that's not necessarily true. That's true. And could I get a second opinion? I mean, possibly I could get a second opinion. Maybe the tests were wrong. I mean, I'm not suggesting it's okay. conceivable. So I just want to be sure that the crisis is a crisis. First of all, that, okay. that's what, when we when I was telling you about Nam Pin when we were in that hotel, we wanted to be sure there was really a coup taking place. And there was. Okay. okay. So once you've established that, uh, you're doing the next right thing, you would accept that and say, okay, um, here's where I am. I can get through this by the grace of God. So or, that was a, let me unpack that again. It, it, this could have just been a Chinese New Year's fireworks and you yeah. could have been calling home and yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. pray for me, I'm about to die. That's right. That's so right. That's so right. Right. taking time to assess the situation, right. Right. gather data, Go to the experts, get counsel, get feedback, input from other people. I mean, so it's not, you, you don't want to just kind of be knee-jerk-like and just respond to it so quickly. So I think that's the key thing. Uh, that's first. But then secondly, the core truth. I, I think this is so crucial, especially for Christians or people of, you know, who want to have a productive life. Have some mantras or core truths or some uh, truisms that you say to yourself that are meaningful to you. I can make it. I can survive. Life will go on after this. I mean, whatever you, whatever works for you, have those in your, you know, back of your mind there. So when bad times happen, pull them out and use them. I can already think of some coming to my mind. Perhaps you can too. Tell, tell me some that you're thinking well, of. Well, right after the break, we'll talk about that because okay. those will then, by the Holy Spirit, come to your remembrance at the time when you need them the most. Black Swan events will happen high impact, whether personally or professionally, we're going to discover once we've uh, assessed the next right thing to do, uh, how to hold on to those core truths. We'll be right back with more Ministry in Motion after the break. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today Coping with Black Swans, How to Handle an Unexpected Personal or Professional Crisis. Our guest, Dr. Delbert Baker, Good. thanks so much for being with Good. us. We've Good. thought about doing the right thing, and then we kind of dig down for those core truths yeah, core uh, that, that help us stay focused. Help me with yeah. some that you've I, found that, that have been helpful for you. You, you know, I, I think a core truth for me is something that works for you. I mean, like I have some, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Um, I think of Abraham Lincoln's, which is a favorite of mine too, this too shall pass. Mm. I mean, just something that kind of gets you, I can survive this. When I'm running a marathon, I think, you know, I can finish this race. I've done it before, I can do it again. Mm. You know, I'm better than this. So whatever kind of helps you kind of get to the moment, that's what you do. And so that's why I think really, Derek, you know, your program talks about a lot. It's really getting deep in the word and having daily devotion. So when mess happens, you've got a reservoir to pull from. You know, I, I love that word of Jesus in John 14, where he says, the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Absolutely. He'll teach you all things and bring to your remembrance. Yes, he will. So uh, a secular person would say, have, have some core sayings that you hold on to. The, the Christian has that added resource of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Bringing that, the Absolutely. Lord is my shepherd. You, you know, and I think about you know, how they say nowadays that we should drive on a full tank. Mm. You know, nowadays more and more, they say so many crises or black swans happen on a regular basis that keep be ready. your car, tank of gas full in your car because you never know when you need it. Mm. Well, that's the way it is with Christians. I mean, if we have a daily life of meditation, Bible study, prayer, talking with people, and we're constantly refreshed with new things, when the cross is boom, mm. when it hits you, you're able to pull from your resources. Mm. Ah, I got something to pull on. I'm not, I'm not dry, I'm not empty. And the Holy Spirit's helping us in that and process. He's helping you, right. A and then you talked about a, a key third response. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That sounds really important. Yeah. Let's talk yeah, yeah. about it's, that. It's a great one. It's uh, surrender, but don't give up. You know, uh, that's... Surrender, that, but don't give up. That sounds like an oxymoron. Yeah, it does. And it's, it's artful. I mean, it's something that you do. It's not intuitive. In other words, you, you give yourself, in a sense, to the providence of God. Mm. Say, Lord, whatever happens, mm. I trust you but yet you don't stop fighting for a good solution. It's like faith and works. It's like, you know, the human and the divine mm. combined together. Surrender, but don't so, so, I mean, like you take, for example, your friend you referred to, you accept the fact, Lord, God knows I don't want anything to happen to my wife. Yes. I would hate for that to happen, but I trust you. 
Yes. So I'm, ter- I'm surrendering to your will. At the same time, I'm going to the best doctors. You know, we're going to try the best, you know, medical, natural remedies. I'll go anywhere in the world to try to find the cure that I can. I'm not going to really give up. Like the guy on the raft, you know, who's saying, you know, I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Right. right. He didn't turn over and die or drop off in the water or give up which he could have, but he didn't. So he surrendered, but he didn't give up. There's power in that, Derek. Great, great, great power in that. You know, I'm thinking of uh, Neil Watts, who was a a church leader out there in the South Pacific. Plane went down off of, uh, what's the, Vanuatu? Okay, yes. Old New Hebrides. Now, six miles out, he he swam for six hours. uh, Wow. But he just said, God, my life's in your hands, but if you want me to live to be a witness to this community... You, you know, know, surrender, but don't, but don't give up. You know, and I think there's a zone with that. I think a person can actually go into a zone. It's kind of a mysterious thing. I, I've, I really realized that sometimes when I was running a marathon, I mean, when I was so totally exhausted, I couldn't run anymore. I was flat out, you know, exhausted. And yet, when I start stop thinking about my pain and I went into this kind of surrender but don't give up mode, mm. all of a sudden, it's like you're on autopilot. You're just carried along. And I think God helps us with that even in our spiritual walk. You know, he kind of takes us into zone when he knows we're trusting him. Mm. And he just guides us to Captain Sully when he landed the plane in the Hudson. Yes. You remember the great story? Yes. He says that. He says that was a black with swan no to him. <laughs> Unexpected. But he, said, he came to a point. He just, you know, he, the next right thing, you know, he went to his mantra, his core truth. I can do this. I know what I've learned in school. Right. I've, I've been right. taught the right thing. And then from there, he surrendered, but he didn't give up. He just used what he did and trusted his instincts. And he landed that baby in the middle of the, the Hudson River, whoever would think that happened. So we, got, we have these great stories about things that can happen. I challenge our listeners to try God, test him. I mean, go out there, face your thing. Don't give up the ghosts. Don't give up faith. Don't turn on him and get mad at him and leave the church and get mad at your family and your life. Trust him and say, maybe, Lord, you can take me on an adventure through this experience. And like Joni Tata Erickson we talked about right, earlier. Right. She's drawing with a pencil in her mouth. She's a she, powerful witness. Uh, Joni and friends have a wonderful ministry on, yeah. on the radio program and so forth. So he can take that terrible thing and turn it into something beautiful if we let it. Yeah, it reminds me that those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. I like that. It's surrender, but don't give up. Don't give up. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. with us. And I, I hate to tell our viewers that you've got a black swan event right around the corner. That's something. But if you're living on planet Earth, That's right. there's a good possibility that something unexpected, high impact is going to happen. And uh, thanks for reminding good, us. Good, good. Next right thing to do. Go to those core truths and then surrender, but don't Don't give give up. up. We're so glad you've joined us for this important discussion uh, on Ministry of Motion. And we have a special offer that we'd like to share with you. This journal, Ministry, an international journal for pastors. If you're a pastor and you don't receive this journal, you may be eligible for a complimentary subscription. You can go to our website at ministryofmotion.tv. Send us an email. Tell us about your church, about your ministry. You may be eligible for this that's blessing 80,000 leaders around the world. It could bless your life too. If you're a lay leader, we have some resources on our website that could also be helpful to you to help you to be the great Christian leader God's calling you to be. And if you face a crisis, a black swan event, remember the things we've learned in our study today. Perhaps go back to the website, watch it again. And then know that those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. May God bless you as you continue in your faithful service for him.